Hey there, I'm Dr. Dom with the Franklin Institute, and today I'm talking about glacier goo. Glaciers are giant rivers of ice, and they cover about 10% of our planet. They're found in the coldest regions, like mountains, in the Arctic and the Antarctic. But these features of our Earth are changing. And thanks to global warming, many of these features are beginning to melt rapidly and shrink. Glaciologists, scientists that study glaciers, are rushing to document these changes. In the glacier goo activity, you're going to simulate some of these changes right in your own home. Here's what you'll need to get started. Two mixing bowls. One and one quarter cup warm water. One cup Elmer's white glue. Two teaspoons borax. Ziploc baggies for storage. A plastic straw or a pipette. In one bowl, mix three quarter cup warm water with one cup Elmer's white glue. Stir until well mixed. In the second bowl, mix one half cup water with two teaspoons borax powder. Stir until the borax powder is almost entirely dissolved. Next, pour your borax solution into the glue and water solution and mix until a glob forms. Use your hands to knead the mixture for two to three minutes or until most of the water in the bowl is incorporated. When you've finished mixing, you can store your glacier goo in the Ziploc baggie. Just like real glacier ice, Glacier goo is a special type of material called a non-Newtonian fluid, which means it behaves differently depending on how much force you put on it. You probably noticed that when you pulled the glacier goo apart slowly, or applied a little bit of force over a long period of time, it seemed to flow like a liquid. But when you pulled it apart quickly, or applied a lot of force over a short period of time, it broke, just like a solid material might. Glacier ice behaves in the exact same way, sometimes flowing downhill like a liquid, and sometimes breaking off in great chunks. So that's why glacier goo is a good material to model how real glaciers behave. Key point one, glacial ice is a non-Newtonian fluid, and it can flow like a liquid or break like a solid. Okay, let's keep exploring. What happened when you left your glacier goo out on a flat surface? Over time, the glacier goo pushes outwards, and it looks like it's flowing like a liquid. What we're seeing here is the effect of gravity acting on the goo. The glacier goo is deforming slowly under its own weight. Just like this model ice, real glacial ice is always flowing, and it's thanks to gravity. Key point two, gravity is the key driver of glacial movement. But it's not only gravity that affects how glaciers flow. As global warming proceeds, and our cold regions begin to warm up, the surfaces of these glaciers are melting and sending that meltwater down beneath the ice. We can use our glacier goo to explore the impact of that meltwater. To do so, I'll be using these chutes that I built from PVC pipe, but you can use any clean, tilted surface, like a baking sheet propped up on some textbooks. We're going to run this experiment two times. In the first experiment, form your glacier goo into a rectangle and place it at the top of your tilted surface. Mark where the end of your glacier goo is. A sticky notepad can be handy for this. The end of a glacier is called its terminus. Now, wait five minutes. After five minutes have passed, measure the distance between the first mark and where your terminus ended up. Record that value. Now, let's run the experiment a second time. This time, we're going to model how meltwater impacts glacier flow. Reform your glacier goo into a rectangle and place it at the top of your tilted surface again. This time, go ahead and press your straw down to the base of the goo and pour five milliliters of water into it. Alternatively, you can use a plastic pipette like I'm using here. Once again, wait five minutes. After five minutes have passed, mark where your terminus has reached and record that value. Let's compare the rates of my two experiments. In the first experiment, I measured about 3.5 inches of movement over five minutes. That's a rate of about 0.7 inches per minute. In the second experiment, I measured about four inches of movement in five minutes, or a rate of about 0.8 inches per minute. Through these experiments, we found that the presence of meltwater increased the rate of my glacier goo flow by about 15%. This meltwater presence can cause big changes in real glaciers too. Whereas most glaciers move around one foot per day, the 
the presence of meltwater can cause a sudden surge and increase that rate to 100 feet per day. Key point three, global warming is melting glaciers and speeding up their flow. What other experiments can you think of using your glacier goo?